if you are old school code red, then you know the story about this person sitting next to me and the horrific thing that happened to her. And But if you are new, you've never heard it before. We're going to deep dive today. I'm Christy Code Red, and you're listening to Rebel Weight Loss and Lifestyle, where we believe food holds the power to heal or poison, and we believe our society has been misled regarding proper nutrition and weight loss. You're in the right place if you're looking for some straight up truth, because I'm here to shed light on the lies and brainwashing that has taken place over the past five decades. Thanks so much for listening. Welcome back to another episode of Rebel Weight Loss and Lifestyle. I'm your host, Christy Code Red, author, entrepreneur, retired professional boxer. And boy, we have got a uh, quite a story for you today. To those of you who we've got new listeners all the time, and even some of you um, who are old school Code Red, it doesn't hurt to rehear this story. And uh, it's hard for me to hear it, but Carrie... Thank you for joining me. And Carrie is going to talk about, I'm just going to give you the floor and you're going to just talk about your weight loss surgery experience. It was pretty horrible. You know, it started out with such great intentions, Christy, and thank you for inviting me because I do have people that still ask me on social media, well, what happened? Well, what did you, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that nobody that these people don't know. And then I start realizing how much the code red community is growing and how many new people come into code red every single day. Uh, now that at the time of this recording, you're back on Facebook doing challenges, just lots of new people and they don't know my story. And I thought this might be a great opportunity for me to reshare my story and hopefully give some hope to people that may be facing the same situation or considering to have weight loss surgery. So I really appreciate you letting me talk about it today. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm honored to have you on, of course, for this reason, Uh, but you, you know, it's, it's been over a dozen years. However, those feelings and those memories are very raw and real on how the whole thing went down. Is it's true. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that one of the parts of getting to be a weight loss coach and working for Code Red is that we really truly never want to forget what it was like before we lost our weight. We never want to forget how desperate we felt, how alone we felt, how isolated we felt, how lack of hope that we had. And that is one thing that I never, Christy, want to forget in all the years that I get the Lord lets me help people working with you. I never want to forget that feeling. And going back and thinking about my story, I definitely can easily remember those feelings of being desperate, not having a lot of hope, feeling like nothing was ever going to work and really looking for that magic bullet. And I think that's kind of an overlying theme in a lot of weight loss stories that we hear at Code Red. Well, take us back to close to 270 pounds and how you had gotten there and kind of what you were, and you've been dieting since you were unfortunately younger, young, and long before you should even have ever, uh, I mean, we, you know, it just was, you were aware of it or however you want to say it at a young age, or it was made, it was brought to your attention at a young age. And, um, you've been battling with your weight for years and you ballooned up to 270. I'll never forget being in high school, Christy, when in looking back at my pictures, I realized now that I was not heavy, um, but I thought I was heavy, but I, I actually never thought I was heavy until a basketball coach who will remain nameless because a lot of people will know her, um, made a comment about, aren't you glad it's basketball season, Carrie? Now maybe you can get your weight down something along that lines. I mean, it's been you know, 35 years. So it's hard to exactly remember what she said, but it definitely made me think, oh, so I'm heavy. And that kind of started the cascade uh, downward from there. I knew that I wasn't skinny like you necessarily, because you were awfully thin. Laura, our sister, awfully thin. I mean, you weren't like as tiny as her, but you definitely, um, you definitely were a lot smaller, you know, and you were just a naturally thinner person. And I didn't have that. I just wasn't built like that. You know what I mean? So, um, and in high school, so once I realized that I evidently had a weight problem, I remember our mom trying to help me. She signed me up for, um, I think it was Jenny Craig, but it may have been like a weight watchers. I'm not exactly sure, but they gave you the pre-planned meals. You went in and we were living in Orfino, Idaho at the time. Someone had a little office there 
And Christy, I would go in and weigh in and they would talk to me about eating. And I'll never forget this memory as long as I live. Mama Carol taking the family hard-earned money and buying me fish from our local IGA, which we did not buy meat. We didn't. We loved on, right, deer meat, elk meat. Like we did not buy meat. And I didn't even like fish. And she made me the fish because that was what the people said that Carrie should eat. I had fish and Melba toast. I'll never forget that Melba toast as long as I live. It was terrible. But um, so those are my earliest memories of dieting. And of course, always struggling having kids, being, um, you know, not not losing weight after the pregnancy. As we talked about in a previous episode, I did Fin Fin right before I got pregnant with my first child and lost quite a bit of weight. But of course, gained it back. Uh, having babies back to back, that's never good. As far as not a lot of recovery time, my kids were 14 months apart and just unhappy relationships got myself up to pretty heavy. And um, I'll never forget trying all the things, Christy, trying all the things. I remember going to the gym and running on the treadmill and then calling you and being like, I'm so hungry. And you were like, can you drink water? And I would go get a Diet Coke, but I would get a granola bar. And, you know, the 300 calories in that granola bar, of course, you know, just erased all the hard work I had done at the gym easily. And so just really not having the right information about nutrition. So this was, again, like you said, 12 years ago, these gastric surgeries were just coming out and maybe they have been out a little bit longer than that, but they were just coming into popularity. Like, um, like the shots are now, you know, everyone's getting the, everyone's getting the weight loss shots. Everything comes and goes, doesn't it, Christy? I mean, everything has fads. And if you guys have been watching this podcast for a while, we're doing code red versus beast body. I mean, you can just see the fads come and go. Well, weight loss surgery was just in a more extreme version of a fad. And I got on the internet and found out that I could go to Mexico and get lap band surgery. But Christy, I had to go to Mexico because I wasn't heavy enough to have it done in the U S and let my insurance pay for it. Now I think that they'll do it for just about anybody. I think insurance companies have become a lot more lenient with their standards. I even went up to uh Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. There was a bariatric surgeon up there and talked to one of them, but I mean, we're talking like 20, $30,000 for back then. Maybe it, maybe it wasn't that much. I don't remember, but it was a lot of money. It was more than it wasn't in my budget to do that at that time. So I figured out a lot of people were going to Mexico and getting it done. And so I looked into it, found a surgeon who actually practiced in the U S so he was a legit surgeon. He was on Oprah and, you know, I mean, so it wasn't like he had never been known or he was just somebody, you know, that nobody had heard of. (laughs) However, going to Mexico for surgery in uh, Tijuana was definitely an experience. Let me tell you, I didn't tell anybody, Christy. I don't think I even told you, did I? No. No, No, because you, when I saw you after that, a couple couple months later, you were so skinny. And I was like, I didn't even, the weight loss surgery never even entered my mind. I just thought she's losing weight. Yeah. And I didn't tell anybody. And I didn't tell anybody because I was so ashamed and embarrassed. Uh, You had to get your cash. You had to bring your cash and like a stack. Can you imagine crossing the border? with that much cash on you. Like, I don't even know what made sense about that. I don't know. I don't know. know. That was a good idea. I remember that now I was an ICU nurse at the time. I remember going into the room to have surgery, the pre-op and seeing the crash cart. And again, the crash cart was super outdated. Now the equipment works. I mean, if you're going to code someone, you're going to code someone. It doesn't matter if you have a new defibrillator or not. But as a nurse, I was like, oh my gosh, this is like, this is like 1960s called and they have a crash cart for me. I just remember thinking, and there were no name bands, you know, again, medicine is practiced differently and I'm not putting medicine down in different countries. It's just different than we're used to. And I think it was especially worse because I was a nurse, right? That made it a lot worse. Uh, I almost said worser. It was worser and worser, Chrissy. So I went there, I had surgery. Um, it was wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. It was like cattle running through a, a chute. I mean, they're there to make money. Now you'll find this very interesting. When I was there, they asked me if I wanted to get the VSG, which is, or VGS, vertical gastric sleeve. Um, and now essentially what they do there is they just take your, your round stomach and cut off the bottom portion. So you kind of have this long, 
cone of a stomach. I said no, that I didn't want it. And then I wanted to stick with a lap band because I had done all the research on the lap band and I thought that was the way to go. But looking back now, since I was, um, you know, heck bent on having weight loss surgery, it probably would have been better for me to get the gastric sleeve. I would, I think I would have had less complications now just from a medical standpoint, but I hadn't read up on it. And I was just for sure that the lap band was the way to go. So I had the lap band surgery and came home with hardly any pain medication. In fact, uh, post-op from a gastric surgery, I was taking a little bit of Toradol, uh, which all my medical friends will know what that is, and Tylenol. And that was it. I went back to work that next week, which is just unheard of, but um, I was a travel nurse. You didn't get time off. I was in the middle of a contract. It was like, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. I had, I had to go back to work. So I went back to work and started on the all liquid diet. Now you were on the all liquid diet, I believe for a month because what happens with a, um, yeah, for a month, I remember being so hungry, Christy, that I was drinking Alfredo sauce. (laughs) And by the way, this is going to become a common theme in my story is me not being able to eat food the right way. Um, so I, so a month of liquids, they, they, when you have a lap band done, um, they put, take your regular stomach, they don't cut it. They put a band over the very top of your stomach and create a little baby stomach at the top. It's tiny. And the idea is you don't want that band to slip because that band goes too far down. Your stomach can prolapse over the top of it. And then you can have necrosis. You can lose part of your stomach. I knew someone that actually ended up with a gastric tube. They couldn't eat, use their esophagus. The whole thing had to heal for a long time. I mean, there's horror stories. There was somebody in the clinic that went and had a hamburger the day after surgery. And that force just pushed that band all the way down. Like, why, why would you spend all that money and then go eat a hamburger? So I was scared to death and I followed all the rules and, uh, I began to have problems shortly thereafter. So that's kind of the first part of my story. Yeah, that's, that's, that's amazing. And you were by yourself when you went down there, right? hundred percent alone. Oh, sis. Yeah, it was kind of scary, just um, and, and not even scary because of the country, just scary because having any kind of surgical procedure done alone is a little bit nerve wracking and not really knowing how things are going to go for you. I remember having so much pain after surgery, and I'm not a wimp in general, uh, but they just would give me Toradol, which I get it. They they didn't have a lot of nurses to monitor people. They couldn't be giving IV narcotics. I understand why they did what they did. But looking back, I'm like, man, I should at least get in a little bit. of got a little bit of morphine or something. I mean, it was painful. It's the story. It's no joke. You went home like the day after the the second day after surgery, they, they let you just get on the airplane and fly home. I mean, they didn't want, you didn't have to follow up. They would call you. Um, they did have decent pre-op testing. So I'm not against having surgery in a different country. I don't, I, my experience was fine with that. My problem was with the lap band itself, not the way it was put in, if that makes sense. Gotcha. The, the okay. surgery part was not a problem. Um, yeah. So I did start to lose weight right away because remember that there's only a couple ways that you're going to lose weight effectively, uh, with especially with gastric surgeries. You're going to have a volume reduction or you're going to have a plumbing So we either change the plumbing or we change the volume or we change both, but that's all they do with gastric surgeries. Those are the two things you can do. So with a gastric bypass, we are changing the plumbing and we're changing the size of the stomach. With a lap band, we're not changing the plumbing. We're not rerouting any intestines. We're not cutting out part of the stomach. We're just changing the uh, volume. So it's a volume reduction surgery. And so, um, that's, you know, so I, because of decreased volume, I was going to lose some weight, but Christy, right away, I started having problems with the lap band. So what kind of like, really like right away, my gosh, I mean, you didn't, it, you knew pretty quick that something wasn't right. I knew something was wrong right away, Christy, because I had something, there's a horrible, horrible term they use. It's called PB, which stands for productive burping. It's a nice way of saying throwing up. So on all the gastric uh, sites, they would say, oh my gosh, it's a PB day or I'm PBing or basically I know it's disgusting, isn't it? I can't believe I remembered that term. So basically the food goes down and you have a baby stomach. So it gets caught at that juncture of the band. 
And it's, it is, it is the most terrible feeling. Imagine that you get food caught here. Christy, have you ever had that happen? And you're like, Yes. Trying to get it to go down like a piece of ice or something goes down sideways and you'll have someone go, Oh, it, it kind of, they do like they have chest pain. They kind of lean forward. That's what it feels like to have a lap band right there. Um, you have, and then you just kind of throw that food back up. Well, the problem with throwing the food back up is that the more you do it, the more you kind of have to do it because you just sort of get in this routine of only being able to eat certain things. And then when certain things don't go down, you kind of start throwing them up. Um, I know that a lot of people that have had gastric band, a lot banding or gastric banding that they will go in and uh, it's an adjustable band, Christy. So you can take fluid in or out through a port in your stomach um, and that you can let some out. If you've lost too much weight, you can put a little or lost, not lost enough weight. You can put, make it more restrictive or less restrictive, just like a belt. So it gets more narrow, more wide, but you've always got something. You've always got a baby's stomach, but you can make it worse or, or, you know, least restrictive, more restrictive. So I started PBing, um, and then just started having more and more trouble with abdominal pain, stomach pain, throwing up a lot. And of course, all that stomach acid in your esophagus can start to really damage the lining of your esophagus. And I never lost all the weight. I just didn't because I was struggling so much to get calories in Christy that I was eating things that were wrong. You know, it, we talk about it all the time on code red. Everybody has a set of rules to follow. It doesn't matter if you are, like you say, if you're Michelle Obama, if you are, you know, um, Donald Trump, if you are a supermodel, everyone has rules you got to follow in order to maintain a healthy weight. Well, the thing with gastric surgery is now you just have a lot more and a lot different rules. I started to struggle with uh, chronic anemia, Christy, and I started to struggle with just being tired because remember that B vitamins, uh, your B vitamins, uh, some of them are made in your parietal cells in your stomach. So if you get part of that cut out or that is damaged, you're not gonna, you're not gonna methylate. You're not going to convert B vitamins the same. B vitamins help with energy. They help with so many things. So it also there is a um, uh, uh, anemia related to the B vitamins. I can't think of what it's called. All of a sudden, it just left my brain. Anyway. Sorry about that. Something Wait, related to pernicious, pernicious anemia. Thank you. Look at you. <laughs> Did you just Google that? No, that's impressive. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. Christy did pay attention when, to, when she went to nursing school. <laughs> I listen when you talk. Yeah. Per, I'm sorry. All of a sudden, like I just went to, so pernicious anemia. So I started having anemia. I started having problems with B vitamin. I started having problems with being tired. Of course, my esophagus, Christy, I was eating Tums by the handful. I kid you not when I tell you I probably ate 10 to 15 Tums a day, at least just ate them constantly and yet was still heavy because I did not get to the root of the problem. And the root of the problem is I'm still eating ice cream just to get calories in. I'm still, I had a gal talk to a gal in one group and she was um, drinking sweet tea. And regained all of her weight just drinking sweet tea because nothing else would go down. You get desperate. So you're like, what's, you can't eat. You're not able to eat in some cases, real food. You're not eating steak. You're not eating broccoli. And you know, what's interesting, Christy, is that you and I together created a program for people that have had weight loss surgery. And the, the reason I bring this up is I didn't know that you could do code red after you had weight loss surgery. There was no one there to talk to me. I mean, you and I, Honestly, y'all listen, Christy and I worked out how to do code red and weight loss surgery because of going through it with me. Christy's like, well, if you can't eat this, maybe we can try this. I couldn't eat broccoli, but I could definitely have green beans. So it, it, it was trial and error, 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 trial and error, Christy and I working together to come up with how to do code red and be a weight loss surgery survivor, which is kind of where this story goes is that, um, we, I started to understand the root of the problem, what really got me to where I am today. And I'm sure you see this all the time with code red. Well, I thought something was interesting that you said, you said I was tired all the time. So you're not getting, you have your, you have the B vitamin is lacking and the iron two things yes. that are, are really going to make you lack of make you tired. And so then 
being so tired that you're making poor decisions. So now you're just choosing Cheetos and ice cream that are, that are just going to be able to go down and that can be something you can eat. And it's a cycle. And then you're more tired and you have too much sure is cycle, cycle, cycle. So you struggled so much with being tired, didn't you? Yeah. Being tired was a big one. Uh, I wasn't drinking water, Christy. I didn't understand the importance of hydration. And so I was just drinking whatever would go down. I was getting a lot of my calories from uh, drinks instead of from food, which we see a lot of weight loss surgery survivors that are still heavy are, you know, you know, they can go and get a mocha choco laka for 500 calories and 36 grams of sugar. I'm making that up, but they can do that. Like they can get that down without a problem, but they can't eat a steak. And so they think I can't, I can't lose weight. I can't be healthy because I can't eat broccoli like everybody else. I can't eat um, raw vegetables like everybody else. Yeah, you're right. You can't, but there is a way to do it. And again, that's because you and I worked together and it was trial and error. So um, I began to have a lot of problems, Christy, and it got worse and worse to the point where I was eroding my esophagus. Uh, when we were living in El Paso, Texas, um, Brandon was in a Sergeant's major, major Academy in El Paso, Texas, Fort Bliss. I don't even know if it's named Fort Bliss anymore. They changed all the names anyway. So we were in El Paso, Texas, and I finally went into a gastric, an actual gastric surgeon. The army got me a referral. I got in there and he did something called a swallow study. I'm sure you know what this is. Um, and it is where you stand up and you have an x-ray, the upper part of your body, and you take in a uh, radioactive drink, um, not radioactive, like it's going to ruin your insides, but it has contrast. So you drink it and they film you in real time, all the fluid going into your mouth. You can see it going into your throat down. You can see it get caught on the pouch and on me, Christy, you could, this is the weirdest thing. You could actually see it start swirling in circles, swirling in circles, swirling in circles and tiny bits of it were trickling through to my other stomach, but most of it was coming right back up my esophagus, right back up my esophagus. It was the most interesting thing. I mean, I'm literally like this, like those of you that are not watching on video, you'll have to watch it. Cause it's funny, but I'm like glug glug. And I'm like, well, I mean, like my mouth is just hanging open. Like is, I mean, you could just, it looked a cartoon. It was like, and then whoop, right up my, and it's, I was like, oh my gosh, it's no wonder. It's no wonder I throw up all the time. And this was just a thickened liquid. This was like um, drinking milk. It was like milk consistency. It didn't taste like milk. It tasted like poo-poo. But anyway, those of you that ever had to have oral contrast know what I'm talking about. So you could see that the gastric surgeon was like, oh my gosh, like you are ruining your esophagus. And even though I was overweight still, Christy, I was malnourished. Christy, you made this point. You said you can be overweight and malnourished. That was one of the best things you ever said to me. Well, you said a lot of good things to me. I probably should keep a list. <laughs> but that was a good one. You were, your cells were not getting nourished. Uh, you weren't getting what you needed. But I was heavy. And that's a misnomer. People think that just because someone is obese, that they must be well nourished. You can be obese and you can be mal nourished. And I definitely was in that situation. So guess what, Christy? It was surgery time. We went in, we were going to go ahead and remove the lap band. And when we were in there, uh, things, things went poorly. Things went poorly when we were in surgery and, uh, they ended up nicking a bowel accidentally the lap band. I mean, you know, you got to realize when they're looking at it, they looked at it from the inside of me looking down, we looked at it this direction, looking straight at me. But when you actually get inside someone's body, looking at the outside in, that's a different picture. You don't know exactly what that's going to look like. Well, mine had, uh, adhesed. It had like, it had attached, it had overgrown. It was, there were ulcerations. It was a hot mess. And I don't think the surgeon expected that at all. So after the surgeon got in there, Christy, obviously, like I said, he didn't realize what a mess it was. It took quite a while to get the lap band undone from my esophagus, from the, from the stomach, get it out, it had to come out in pieces. I have pictures of it. It's terrible. It's gross. And then we nicked a bowel. And we messed up some stuff and I ended up with some version of a row and Y, like a, an actual gastric bypass surgery because of mistakes and things happen to be, it's okay. I'm not upset about it, but 
I was supposed to be in surgery an hour and a half. Christy, I woke up six hours later. And when my, my eyes little opened up, eh, I looked across the room and I saw a heart rate monitor and I went, I'm in the ICU. I knew immediately. Now, Christy, let me just say, as an aside, the worst place for an ICU nurse to be is in the ICU. No ICU nurse wants to wake up in the ICU. I thought I would wake up in outpatient surgery and they would go ahead and send me home. And I looked and I looked at the clock and I saw 6 p.m. And I looked over at my husband and I said, what? And he goes, there were some problems. And now this is the most unmedically guy I know. Like Brandon went to work for the vet. I got to tell this because it's cute. And my husband is amazing at so many things, but he came home and he said, Christy, do you know there are two different names for every medication? I was like, well, what do you think I've been doing for the last 20 years? Of course I know that. So this is not, this is not a medically guy. I mean, this is just not, and that's okay. I love him. And you know, he's very smart, but he's just not medically. And I go, yeah, honey. And he goes, no, no, actually all of them have two names. I was like, I know. <laughs> so he didn't know what to tell me. And I was like, what do you mean things didn't go well? And he's like, things, things went wrong. Things didn't go as well as they thought it was going to. And they had a lot of complications. So I ended up staying in the hospital two or three days. I had multiple drains, but my life got better from that moment on. Thanks to this woman you're looking at right here, because we had extensive conversations on how to heal and help me lose the rest of this weight and finally get past this lap band issue. And Chrissy and her advice with regard to this was key. And this was really the birth of the how to do code red and have be, I like to say be a weight loss surgery survivor. This was the, this is the infant, the newborn, bring it home, eight pounds, seven ounce stage of this program. Well, a third of our clients to come to us are weight loss surgery survivors. So when we, when you, when we were trying to get through your situation, we, it was like the beta pro we didn't know it was going to be a program. And then we realized, oh, there's a whole lot of people that need this kind of information. And we were, uh, pioneering it with you. And once we got it all ironed out and realized what you need and what you don't need, we realized this is kind of standard across the board for a lot of weight loss surgery survivors. I'll never forget Christy having conversations with you right before surgery. Like I've got to do this differently than I did the first time. Cause I knew I was going to be on liquids again. And you were like, we got to do a, we got to do B Carrie, we got to do C. And you said so many things to me that I have echoed to clients of code red since then other rebels. You said to me, you no longer get to just eat willy nilly. That's not your life anymore. Every bite counts once you had weight loss surgery. You're not just like Betty, who has a full stomach, who can have a box of Nilla wafers. You know, I mean, she shouldn't, but she can. You don't have that option. Protein is king. You know, making smart choices is king. And you taught me all of that. And that started in El Paso, Texas. As I was trying to figure out how not to throw up constantly. So the throwing up sidebar, the throwing up has gone away every once in a while I will eat and it's always meat. I mean, you know, you never throw up candy. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. No, um, I will eat a meat and if it's the wrong time of day or I'm stressed, it'll mm -hmm. come back up. Uh, especially I don't do well. Yeah. Eat too fast steak. I don't do well with steak. I love steak. I don't do well with steak. Sometimes chicken, if it's a little dry, but it's just, it's, it's truly not a puke in the sense that I shouldn't say puke. It's not a vomit in the sense that y'all are thinking of vomiting. It's not like that. Like, you know, Christy got food poisoning, not like, like from your toes up. It's just like, it's almost like the top part. You kind of throw up off the top part. It's, it's a strange thing, but it's no fun. Nevertheless, it's no fun. So Christy, this experience, I'm, I'm happy. What is, what is that song? God bless the broken road that led me back to you. I'm, I'm happy that I had the experience I did with the lap band surgery and all the complications and where I am today, because I believe that a lot of people in code red need to know that there is something on the other side of what you're going through. And also there's something better if you haven't had surgery yet. Well, and, and well, I like the fact that, 
you're on my team with this experience because now don't nobody say nothing to me about nothing and go, I can't, I can't, I can't. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We got through it. We know you can because Carrie did it. And so you can't argue with Carrie about this. That's what I love about it. No, I'm telling you anything you've been through as a uh, weight loss surgery survivor, and you can't give me any bull crap excuses because I threw up the water when I first started and I whined to Chrissy, yeah, I can't drink the water. I complained about having to have a vegetable with every meal. Oh, I can't eat the vegetables. You know, I whined about not being able to finish all my food. Oh, my stomach. I mean, I, y'all, if you are going through it, I have been through it. I am here to tell you. And so Christy and I started talking, I don't know if it's been a, about a year, year and a half ago. And we mm. came up with the idea Longer to that, come up. With, has it been that long yeah. to come up with the, the weight loss surgery survivor kit that we have at code red, the program, it's a digital video learning series. And I just want to throw this out here. Oh, plus me, supplements, plus supplements, plus supplements. It's, it's everything I give you. I just want to tell you guys this. I give you all the tricks all the tips, all the hints, everything you need, all the, I go through every kind of surgery there is, the complications I go through. I mean, I think I cover everything. It took me forever, of course, with Chrissy's guidance and a lot of research to record this series. So if you want to do code red and you have had gastric surgery and you don't know if you can, this program is amazing. Now, that's not why I'm telling you my story. I'm telling you my story for those of you that may think there is no hope, there is hope. Now, can you do code red like every Tom, Dick, and Harry? Absolutely no. It has to be a little bit different for you. Now, you still follow the same rules. You still follow the same tenets. You still do every, that doesn't change. You don't get to drink less water just because you had gastric surgery. I'm not talking about that, but I'm talking about, here's the, I'm going to give you a great example, Christy. Uh, a lot of people on code red have a lot of raw veggies. If you mm. have had gastric surgery, raw veggies are probably a no-go for you. The bulk is too much. They cause too much reflux and the gas and all the buildup. It's too much. Now I can have carrot sticks every once in a while, but that's about it. Like I can't eat. I couldn't sit down like you, Christy. I've seen you take, this is disgusting. Y'all a trigger alert. Christy takes mayonnaise and puts it on broccoli and eats it. So add her to the church prayer list. I've seen her do that. I've seen her dip it and eat it. Okay. I just want you guys to know, I've seen Christy do that. I could no more sit and eat broccoli and mayonnaise. First of all, cause I'm not, I'm not a cereal killer. <laughs> so I couldn't eat broccoli and mayonnaise. Uh, but, but also I couldn't eat broccoli and mayonnaise. So a lot of people say, so if you're trying to do code red, the program like Christy Code Red is doing it, you're not going to be able to. Christy has a different stomach than you do. If you're trying to do it like your friend Betty from work that's never had surgery, you can't do it like her. But I can teach you how to do Code Red and be successful. So I think that there are a lot of tips and tricks that we have figured out along the way. Um, but I, I want to I wanna speak, Christy, for people that are thinking about having weight loss surgery. Is it okay if I do that just for a second? CodeRedLifestyle.com forward slash WLS. I want to throw that in there oh, if you're yeah. interested in the kit. Yeah, go ahead. Christy, there are a lot of people that are thinking about weight loss surgery. And I just want to speak to you with every head bowed and every eye closed. I want you to look in my eyes. It, yep, I see that hand. I see that hand. <laughs> okay. For those of you that are thinking about having weight loss surgery, I want to ask you if you will just give it one month of code red. If you will just do code red for one month before deciding to get gastric surgery, there are a lot of people that do great with gastric surgery, but I will tell you that if you choose to do it more than likely, it will not be a consequence free decision. Um, there are things that I have, have to live with for the rest of my life, Christy for the rest of my life. Now I'm okay with that. I've managed them. I'm, I'm doing great. I'm trying very hard to get past them, but there are definitely things that'll never be normal quote unquote with me. So if you are thinking about having gastric surgery of any kind, let me tell you that I understand. First of all, I understand the desperation you feel right now. I understand the frustration. People think that you're lazy. You aren't people think that you have no willpower. That's not true. People think that you don't care about what you eat. That's not true either. I get it. I know those things aren't true about you, but having a gastric surgery is truly, they try to kind of blow off 
the side effects, but I want you to know it's not as consequence free as you think. And if Christy can help you lose all the weight you want without having to have surgery, I would love for you just to give Code Red a 30 day try. That's from my heart. Wait, yeah, thank you. Weight loss surgery, uh, the average weight loss is about 10% of your body weight every month. And that's what we can do on Code Red. We can truly get the same amount off of you in the same amount of time. And I know it sounds crazy, but surgery free and saving all that money and saving all that downtime and, and having to have lifelong consequences. Guys, um, thank you. That, yes, yeah, sis, that's what I would say. Just give us, give me 30 days before the surgery and let me just prove to you that there's a way, because I know I, I would imagine what you're thinking is the weight loss surgery is faster on weight loss. Like I'll lose weight faster. This is just as fast. This is just as fast with real food, water, and sleep, no shakes, no pills, no diet foods, no exercise. So we would love for you to just, we are usually the last resort before somebody goes under the knife. At least give it 30 days. I mean, you're probably 30 days out from surgery anyway. So why not give it 30 days and just see and those of you that have had weight loss surgery, I want to speak to you. I understand how frustrating it is. I understand how hard it is. I understand what you're going through, especially if there's a shame of regaining some weight or regaining a lot of weight, regaining all of your weight. Maybe you're back to ground zero. I want to tell you that there is hope for you. There is hope. The way that Christy has designed Code Red and with the help of the weight loss surgery survivor kit, I really believe that you can get back on track. Now, I do want to say that you kind of have to give up your bull crap excuses. Now, that's true of anybody in weight loss, right, Christy? Like, we have to give up our bull crap excuses. We have to kind of go, yeah, that wasn't exactly. You have to not believe your own lies. Like, I can't eat anything. I can't drink water. I can't eat very much. Well, I always say, if you weren't eating anything, then, I mean, you're eating something. If you're still overweight, you're eating something. So yeah. let's adjust that something to something that will help you lose weight. You may not be able to do bacon, but I bet you can do scrambled eggs. You may not be able to do big old hamburgers with no buns, but I bet you can do ground beef. You know, I bet you can do ground turkey. You may not be able to do ribeyes, but I bet you can do a note meal really well. So I will teach you how to lose the weight through help with Christy and the way that she designed the program. It's just a beautiful way to get back on track. And I want to also say, please forgive yourself. Don't feel bad. Don't feel guilt. Don't feel shame for where you are. Just realize that it's just taken a little bit of time to bring you back around to where you're seeing our face and you're understanding that there is a different way you can do things. Code red lifestyle.com forward slash W L S that's going to get you the kit. At least go read about it and see what it can do for you. It's very reasonably priced. It's going to get you all the supplements. We'll get that out to you. Uh, we ship a couple times a week and we'll get that out to you, you know, quickly. Carrie, thank you for sharing your heart with us and that whole heartbreaking story. Uh, guys, we hope you enjoyed another, uh, just another great episode of rubble weight loss and lifestyle. We appreciate you being here and we'll see you on the next one. Thank you everybody. Thank you so much for listening to Rebel Weight Loss and Lifestyle. If you are looking for some hardcore accountability to get and keep this weight off, look no further because I've got VIP Connection. This is the ultimate connection to me just short of me sleeping on your couch. You're going to get three daily messages from me in real time directly to you. You're going to submit your weight every Friday. We're going to go over it in a weekly meeting on Sunday nights, and I'm going to give you feedback. You'll have access to a monthly VIP breakfast with me and Boise, a monthly VIP supplement box, access to any workshop, any PDF promo that I hold for that month. You'll have access to the ringside membership. And best of all, you'll have a fully customized nutrition program written just for you. We're talking about over $3,000 total value for $3.97 a month, and you can cancel anytime. Go to coderedlifestyle.com forward slash VIP to check that out.